Hello. Hello! Welcome to Sunday, Sunday Night at, at eight. 8. My name's Hannah. My name's Johnny. Um, and we're so pleased to have you with us. Welcome to Sunday Night at 8. <laughs> I don't know why we've already done that bit. I know, we've already done that bit, haven't we? Um, we're at church this evening, would you believe it? We're not in the building, but the church is not the building. The church is the people. And when the people gather together, um, that is a gathering of church. So tonight we're gathering together um, and we're calling ourselves church. Um, and we've got the kind of normal things that make up a bit of a church service, really. So... Um, Johnny and I are hosting. Johnny's going to lead some worship on his guitar. Um, I'll do a little talk and um, we'll pray for each other. And uh, yeah, this is this is as good as it can get from a distance. Um, so yeah, you're really, really welcome. Uh, it'd be great as well if you could uh, like this post and share it. Uh, if you think, oh, this is really good. Um, we really were doing this. We call this uh, church for people who don't go to church. So, uh, you know, we want to share it and we want other people who don't normally go to church to see it as well. So do share it, uh, but also do comment. Do say hi in the comments. We'll read them out and we'll say hello back to you. But also, um, you know, comment later if you're watching it later. Uh, not everyone watches this live. Uh, but yeah, keep on commenting. Send us a little message. Yeah, keep, and... keep in touch. Say hi to each other as well. One of the things that is so lovely to see is when people are starting to greet each other and say hi to each other. So do use the comments to greet people. Even if you don't know them, you can still say hi to them. Radical. It is. It's rad. <laughs> it's just not a word that suits me at all. Rad. Anyway, um, every week we start off with a question, an opening question. And uh, this evening, we thought we'd go kind of topical. It's the summer holidays now. Um, and, uh, you know, that kind of typical British thing, whenever we smell a little bit of um, lighter fuel out in the garden, we say, oh, somebody's having a barbecue. So we thought our starter question this evening would be, what is your best barbecue recommendation? Mm. Um, and give us some kind of like, extreme ideas things to try share it share your recipes use the comment section what is your um yeah barbecue recommendation sweet or savory does anyone need oh. sweet sweet recommendations <clears throat> just good yeah i'd have to go for ribs ribs you like you, yeah you like a, ribs on ribs. barbecue ribs some barbecue sauce on them mm. i remember go. being in america and they did i was watching someone and they did this kind of chicken where you put a beer can yeah. into the cavity of the chicken mm -hmm. and you stand the chicken up on its end yeah. if anyone's logging in now and they think they're like what is this some sort of cooking show <laughs> yeah they're gonna think it's cooking show in two minutes you realize that i don't have a clue what i'm talking about when it comes to cooking anyway yeah the chicken over the beer can mm -hmm. and then it kind of the beer kind of gives it moist doesn't it yeah and and yeah. steams it from the inside has anyone ever tried that I don't know. Share your thoughts. Share your ideas. Should we say hi to them? Yeah, let's do that. Oops. Oh, that's the wrong bit. It's the wrong bit. <laughs> Scrolling down the wrong bit. Hi to Stu. Hi, Stu. Hi to Jackie. Hello, Amanda. Hi, Megan. Hey, Megan. You, I saw on your Facebook the other day that you've had a good week. Like, like uh, what you showed a picture of. Don't want to break confidentiality, <laughs> yeah, but it was really so, good. Don't want to where you're going with that. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. how, do, how, do, how do Claire? Um, and Stu says, Straight in. Steak or halloumi? Oh, halloumi. Yeah, we didn't think of halloumi. Barbecued halloumi. Or corn on the cob. Corn on the cob. Oh, think? yeah, that's always a good option. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sporting my uh, Ghoul AFC yeah, mug. Yeah, the mug, the Ghoul AFC mug. It's brilliant. Support your local. <laughs> um, Johnny is going to lead us in worship now the song and uh, i'm going to swizzle swizzle you around so that you can see him there we go
got we've got some good ideas oh, have we? for barbecue That's food. Good. We have. Um, and a few follow-up questions that are just kind of ticking over in my mind. Uh, what have we got? Well, what have we got? We've got Jackie's. Banana stuffed with chocolate spread and pecans. Oh my goodness, mm, that yeah. sounds so good. That sounds really good yeah, actually. Yeah, it does. We've made so much banana stuff <laughs> yeah. today. We've literally... Banana waffles. The whole house smells of bananas. Banana, banana waffles. Cake. Banana cake. Oh, so good. Bread. Is it cake or bread? It's a, it's a banana loaf, yeah. Kind of a bread. A bread. Yeah. Um, hi, Jess. Good to have you with us. Um, Megan agrees about corn on the cob. It's good, isn't it? It's such a good one. It's kind of simple, but good. Do you, do you cook... Do you cook the corn on the cob first, or do you just put it straight on the barbecue? Oh, I think probably cook you, it first, surely. Do you cook it on the barbecue in its leaves, or do you take those off? Don't oh, know. I don't know. It's probably... Different, I don't know. Yeah, don't, don't know. know either. Don't know either. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to do Jess's? Yeah, Jess talks about, my dad used to marinate chicken breast with reggae reggae sauce, stick it on the barbie. Hmm. Reggae reggae. Reggae reggae sauce. When you were young, how old is reggae reggae sauce? I've never heard of reggae reggae sauce. <laughs> it's like, reggae reggae sauce was like only a few years ago. <laughs> and now I'm feeling like, wow, that, yeah, that probably was like... I'm, I've never heard of reggae 10, reggae 10, 15 sauce. years ago. It's from like Dragon's Den. Oh, is it? Oh, well, there we Levi go. Levi Roots. Ah. Reggae reggae sauce. There you there go. You go. I just feel like I'm advertising reggae reggae sauce. Yeah, you said I, it quite a lot of times. No, I've got no commission for reggae, <laughs> reggae sauce. It's like, feels now like a campfire Hopefully, game someone would send how, us some money. <laughs> how many times you can say reggae, reggae sauce. What's that? <laughs> reggae, reggae sauce. <laughs> Jess, what have you started? <laughs> um, Helen is was going to do the whole banana and um, pecans, but she uses chocolate buttons. Oh, Cadbury chocolate well. buttons, but other chocolate buttons are available. Um, so Amanda, uh, s'mores or bananas uh, sliced lengthways so and filled with chocolate then wrapped in tin foil yeah. from the farmer. We used to do that with the bananas yeah. wrapped in tin foil, so good. Yeah. And Claire, Claire no. puts, this is all Claire, the bananas, can you put a Mars bar into a banana? Uh, that is sure, a... Surely the Mars bar is the size of the banana. <laughs> sure, it's just like, like, just get the banana, throw it away <laughs> and just eat, eat a Mars, Mars bar. bar. <laughs> Uh, yes, there we are. Yeah, see reggae, that. reggae sauce. Yeah, that's true. But that's <laughs> Thanks, like Georgina. ten years. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, twenty-four. Okay, ten years ago. Yeah. Wow. That. Wow. Makes me feel old. No. You're not old. <laughs> Jess is just young. Yeah. Before. Well, no. I'm just saying that I am actually five years older than you. So if you if you're talking about feeling old, then it's not really doesn't really do me much good. Ox. <laughs> oh dear. Great. Right. Shall, no, we shall we move on? Anyway, let's move on. Um, Should we talk about summer Sundays? Yeah, let's talk about summer Sundays. So excited about summer Sundays. Yeah, so kind of at the moment with all the COVID restrictions, uh, we haven't kind of decided to kind of reopen the church building. Uh, you know, there's only something like 16 pews we can actually use in the whole building. Uh, it's not really practical at the moment. Uh, so what we're looking at is out through the rest of August is actually having some time outside the church. So uh, between two and four uh, and the remaining Sundays in August. And also Rich will do a sort of a 3 p.m. slot with some of the kids. that will do some worship and some craft as well, all outside in the ch in the church grounds. Yeah, starting next so week. So you come along. Yeah. Come along, bring your friends. Maybe not bring your friends. I don't know how many people are along. <laughs> yeah. Don't maybe don't bring your friends. You know, if you're on this and you, you can. are regular, come if along. You are a friend or do just yeah. bring it We um we're gonna mark out the ground so that we've got the two distant two meter distance. Um but bring bring something to sit on. Um probably a jumper just in case it does get a bit windy. Um yeah, and we'd love some of you have never met before. So I feel quite I quite I feel quite emotional mm. about the thought of it actually. Yeah, um, I think it's gonna be quite yeah. Yeah. Bring some Maybe tissues. Some people, yeah. Um and a snack if you want to have a snack. We're not gonna put on any food and, and drinks and things just because of the infection risk. Um hi Julie, good to have you with us. Um 
uh what's what else oh yeah two weeks time oh amanda can't wait to finally meet us because that's really nice isn't it she's going to be around which would be lovely amanda we can't wait either um and uh jackie says melt part size, melt this is complicated size. Part melt a fun size Mars bar, then get two digestive biscuits and squash the warm oozing Mars between them and enjoy. Wow. I love a Mars bar actually. That sounds that's, that's good. A good one, mm, that is good. Um, in two weeks' time, Johnny and I are going to have a couple of weeks on holiday, so um, we're not going to Spain. We're staying uh, staying within the UK, but we're going to be off for a few weeks. So. Um, <laughs> So I'm totally distracted by the comments. Uh, in two weeks' time, you've got a real treat for a couple of weeks. Joshua and Helen are going to um, guest host Sunday night at eight. Joshua is our new curate, and he's married to Helen, and they're both just wonderful people. So they're going to um, be hosting in a couple of weeks, and they're going to do two weeks in a row. So that's a real treat um, for you all in two weeks' time. And they know all about reggae reggae sauce when they were young. <laughs> they, they are young enough to know about reggae reggae sauce. <laughs> uh, hi Sue, good to have you with us. Um, Sue, you love tennis. We all know that you love tennis, and that uh, you know we're okay that it takes priority. Uh, glad to have you with us, and you come into a conversation about reggae reggae sauce. Yeah. And uh, barbecues. <laughs> good. Well, we are journeying still through John's Gospel, and um, and we're going to look tonight at John chapter 19. If you don't have a Bible, or um, even part of a Bible, then we've got some that we're going to be sending out, and we are sending out free of charge. If you want um, a Bible, or even just get started with a, with a John's Gospel that I've got here, you can kind of vaguely see, because it always yeah, reflects, clear, yeah. um, just say... Yes, please, in the comments, and then we'll get in touch with you. So just put yes, please. We'll get in touch with you. And um, even if you're watching on Catch Up, again, just put yes, please, and we'll get in touch with you, and you can let us know what you'd like, and we'll send it through to you. So we're looking at John chapter 19, um, and we're beginning at verse 16. So basically, this is um, the point in the story of Jesus where he has been um, put on trial, a bit of a mock trial really, and um, the crowd are all um, wanting his blood and so he's going to be crucified. So it says, finally, Pilate, that's Pontius Pilate, you might have heard of, um, who was in charge at the time, handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, there they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. And then I'm going to skip to verse 31. Now, um, and, and by this point, Jesus has already died. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man. It's just awful. It's just awful, this is, of the first man who'd been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. When they came to Jesus and found he was already dead, they didn't break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. So you've got this awful, awful um, story of Jesus on the cross. Um, he dies and um, they really want, um, in a, a very barbaric way, uh, they want the people to die quickly on the cross so they break their legs so that they would die faster. But they come to Jesus and they find that he's already died. Um, and so what they do is they put a spear into his side and blood and water flow out. Now that apparently is a medical phenomenon. You, if you're medical, you'll know more about this than me. But apparently the blood and the water separate. Um, so the red blood cells and the white blood cells separate when, when you die. And so the, um, there was a sign really that Jesus had died when the blood and the water spilled out. It was quite a normal thing. That wasn't really um, special. 
uh, about Jesus that that happened. It was just a normal thing that happens to um, human bodies. So when we look at the life of Jesus, why is it important that Jesus died? I mean, we know from the stories that he rose again from the dead. And so we can say as Christians, Jesus is alive. Um, and that's wonderful, isn't it? Being able to say Jesus is alive. Why does it matter that his life was interrupted by this death? I mean, it would be totally amazing and miraculous if Jesus had just stayed alive. Um, and he quite easily could have done that. He was fully God. Um, and so he could have just stayed alive and still been alive today. But there's this interesting point in Jesus' life where he dies um, and then he rises again three days later. Well, John, who is the eyewitness who's writing this book, talks about Jesus' death and he says um, that when they realised that Jesus had died, um, he says, the man who saw it has given testimony and his testimony is true. Um, and he says he knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. Jesus, uh, John is probably talking to himself, uh, talking to himself, talking about himself. Sounds like me. I often talk to myself. But I think John here is talking about himself where he, when he says, um, the man who saw it. Uh, we think that John is saying, actually, I saw it. I saw it. I know it's true because I saw it happen. Um, and the reason that John wants to say that it happened is that so the readers would believe. So what is it about Jesus' death that John is trying to communicate so that they would believe? Well, as we read through John's gospel, we find there's always layers to the stories that he tells. So the stories he tells are always kind of to be taken at face value, but there is always some digging to be done and there are always other kind of symbolic layers to the story that he tells. And it's really interesting here that John, when he talks about Jesus dying, he refers to the blood and the water. He doesn't really have to do that. He could just say, Jesus died, um, he was obviously dead, but he actually talks about the blood and the water flowing down. And the reason that we think John is using these two descriptions is because these two things are quite significant in understanding what Jesus did when he died. So first of all, the blood. Well, the blood speaks about something that is called atonement. I don't know if you've seen the film Atonement. I read the book, I was quite shocked by it, so I never saw the film. Um, but atonement basically is a word that describes the fact that if something has been, if someone has done something wrong, that it's one thing to say sorry, but actually there is a certain amount of kind of having to make amends. So um, if you've done something wrong to somebody, then you can apologise, but also you feel like you have to make amends somehow, you have to try and make it better. And that is essentially what atonement is. Um, and the, the way that the Bible looks at atonement is it says that when sin has occurred, so when we've done wrong things, when we thought wrong things, when we've said wrong things, that there has to be some kind of making amends, that there has to be some kind of making up for it. Um, there has to be a, a price that's paid. I mean, that echoes out, doesn't it, in our legal system. Um, that uh, when someone is found guilty by a court, they have to pay a penalty. And we know that that is the way it should be. Um, and, you know, often we hear outside courts people saying, oh, it, it's awful that this person only got, you know, five years when really they should have got 15. We've got a sense of what, what is needed to make amends for um, our wrong actions. What happened in the Old Testament, that there was this kind of symbolic making amends um, when somebody had sinned. So um, the, in the Old Testament, uh, the whole um, group of people would gather and they would sacrifice animals 
Um, and we can't really think about that now as, as being something um, very nice or correct or PC and it's it's horrible, I, I don't like the thought of it. But actually in that era, at that time, it was perfectly acceptable that blood would be shed if um, a sin had occurred. In the New Testament what happens is the symbolic of the Old Testament actually becomes the real of the New Testament. So blood is shed but it's not an animal anymore. Jesus is the one who offers himself to atone for the sin of the whole world. Jesus was the one person who didn't need to atone because he led a perfect life. He didn't need to atone for sin because he hadn't sinned. He was perfect, he was God. But he saw the sin of the whole world he saw the sin of people around him. He saw the, um, the, the lack of perfection um, and the way that people could never be perfect. And instead of condemning us to death, he took the death for us. He took the penalty, he paid the penalty for us. So Jesus absorbs in himself all our sin and he goes to the cross and he dies, he pays the penalty. And how incredible that Jesus, who was fully God, shows us that in the face of our sin, our shame, our guilt, um, the mess of this world, that God doesn't stay distant, but instead he offers himself in Jesus to atone for our sin. The price is paid. Now imagine the worst thing that you have ever done. And you know, I've done some pretty bad things in my time. I've, I've betrayed friends, I've lied, um, at, at times I've stolen. Um, I've done some pretty bad things. Now imagine the worst thing you have done, um, and that might be difficult for some, for some of you, and, and what you deserve for doing that. Now Jesus steps in and he says, what you deserve for doing that, I'm going to take that punishment myself. I'm going to take that punishment. I'm going to be punished on your behalf. Isn't that an incredibly moving and powerful thing? Jesus absorbs in himself the punishment that we deserve. So that's the blood. The water signifies new life. Can you remember last week we talked about God being creator and that Jesus brings the life of God into the world and on the cross as he died that life is released. The life of God is brought through Jesus and on the cross the life is released and that's signified by the water. Jesus doesn't only offer us forgiveness and freedom from sin, but he offers us new life. And that new life is transformational. It changes our hearts, it changes our lives, and it puts us back together day by day. The transformational life of Jesus is given to us, and that is what is released at the cross. Now that's a lot of theology, isn't it? Um, it's quite heavy, it's quite deep. There's a lot to work through and that's been a real whistle-stop tour. But I guess as a, if I really want to summarise um, the cross tonight, what I really want you to know, each of you individually, is that the love of God took Jesus to the cross. And that love wasn't just a generic love for the whole world. It was a personal love. Jesus went to the cross to die for you because he cares so much about you. He doesn't want you to bear the weight of your own sin. He wants to set you free from that and he wants to give you new life. And that's been my experience, it's been Johnny's experience and we're starting to hear stories of people who are journeying with Jesus um, in that life that he is bringing and that is our prayer for you that you'd know the life 
that Jesus has given you through his death on the cross. Let's just take a moment now to pray. Um, we'd love to pray for you. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, um, just take a moment. You might even find it helpful to imagine um, Jesus standing in front of you, telling you that he loves you and that he will, he'll bear the burden for you. And Father God, we pray for each other. We thank you that you didn't leave us, but that you came and you rescued us through Jesus. And we pray that you would break through into all our situations, that you'd let us know that we're forgiven, that we're free from guilt and shame, that we're loved, and that we can have new life. More of you for us, Lord Jesus. Yeah, <clears throat> and there might be just some people that might be kind of like, well, is this kind of God thing really real? Uh, and I just, yeah, just urge you just to actually pray and just say, okay, God, if you're real, uh, show me, reveal yourself to me. Um, tell me who you are, show me who you are. Mm. Pray that um, as we take those steps of faith, God, that you would help us understand that there will be that kind of head and heart thing going on together, both knowing in our hearts, but also understanding in our minds more and more about Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'll hand back over to you. Yeah.
Amanda, it is a lovely song. It's quite powerful. Um, everything's gone quiet in the chat. I hope everyone's all right. Yeah. Uh, Don't know why you talk. <laughs> I hope you're all doing okay. Um, if you feel like God is um, at work in your life, please do get in touch. Uh, we just we're just here because we want to walk the journey with you and help if we can. Um, but. We, we're here because we love Jesus and uh, he's worth he's worth it and we want to let you know that really so um, yeah get in touch with us if there's anything we can do to help and do come to summer Sundays next Sunday afternoon in church grounds two till four and we will see you next week yeah we will see you next week it's been a pleasure um, oh thanks Jackie that's encouraging um, yeah, it's been a pleasure and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week, if not before. Lots of love. Bye. Bye.